Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zeb from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I'm back to see a good buddy of mine, Lee Stoffer. Lee, how are you doing? I'm having an awesome day, Zeb. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, it beat me to my punchline. Now what this video is, this is a continuation of a series we're doing with Lee Stoffer at his abode here in Milton Keynes. And what this series is about is covering the topic of sheaves, specifically for spoon stroke hook knives. Now we have done some previous videos before this particular video that you're watching now. If you haven't done so already, you can watch those by clicking the links below in the description. Now, in this particular video, we're probably, what would you say, we're looking at potentially the easier sheath. Yeah, it's what? really affordable, quick, simple, and you know, the materials we're using, there's other uses for as well. So you might have some spare kicking about, left over from a job, or you can go and buy a, a short length of it from a, a supplier's and it's not expensive and it's really durable and easy to work with. When he first showed me this sheaf, I was like, gosh, it can't be that simple, can it? <laughs> and it's really durable as well. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna jump straight into this tutorial. And what Lee Stoff is gonna do is talk you through step by step and how to make this. The one slight caveat I will add is our endeavor with this entire series, where possible, is to teach it in a way where it's accessible to as most of you as possible. As with everything, there's like a myriad of ways which you can do this, even with this particular project that we're gonna be looking at today. But it's just a caveat to add as we move forward that what Lee's Endeavour is trying to do, because he's got a fully equipped workshop here, but what he wants to do is use as basic tools as possible, uh, where people like myself and yourself who don't have this paraphernalia that you see around us, uh, that you can replicate what he's doing in this video. So Lee, with your kind permission, we'll get started. Let's go for it. Guys, hope you enjoyed the rest of this video. So this is the material that we're going to be working with. You're going to find it in most homes. Um, I've done a bit of plumbing in my time, so this is a you know a bit that I had left over from jobs. But you can go and buy this from hardware stores, uh, you know, DIY sheds, whatever. And it's going to be available probably anywhere in the world. This is documented as 32 millimeter. That would be an inch and a quarter in imperial. You can get inch and a half, and it can be used for a multitude of things. Um, we're specifically going to be making a a little blade box for our old friend. Uh, the more a hook like we used for the last time for the wooden sheath video. We're doing a similar type of thing. So we've got a retaining peg. This is just a little prototype and it's going to slide in and be held in by the peg again. But you don't just have to, you know, there's other things you can use this stuff for. This is a inch and a half auger. So this is slightly bigger PVC pipe. It's the inch and a half stuff or 43 mil. And all I've done is inserted a piece of wood into it. That's been glued and pegged in place. And then the lead screw of the actual auger bit drills into the piece of wood a little bit. It just holds it in quite firm. So obviously that plastic prevents the, the auger bit from being damaged. Um, other more awkward tools you could sheath with it are things like bill hooks, machetes, parangs, those kind of things. And for that, you're gonna need a bigger pipe. This is like full size waste pipe. This is a four inch stuff. Um, but again, the beauty of this stuff is it, it can be malleable when you warm it up. So one of the problems that you could have trying to use it for a spoon knife sheath, for example, is the fact that a mora knife has got a fairly small handle and it's going to pull straight out the other side. If we don't do something about flattening it, you can put your peg in and obviously it's going to stop the hook from falling out, but you're going to have to have a much longer piece of pipe to worry, you know, to stop this drift from letting it out the top of the thing there. So to keep it sort of simple and a bit more um, practical, we're going to flatten the pipe first. Um, there's various ways that you can do that, but you're going to, it's going to require some heat. Um, I've experimented with this. This prototype I actually heated up with a, um, a hot air gun, which is an option, and squeezed it in a vise. But then I started playing around with it a little bit and worked out actually all you need is boiling water. Everybody's got a kettle, or well, hopefully most people have got a kettle, if not a saucepan and a heat source. So we can just boil some water, soften this pipe enough to flatten it to actually accommodate the blade better. So what's gonna happen is when you push the blade in, it's gonna go in and we're gonna do it so it just bites on that ferrule again, like we did on the, on the wooden box. So we just push it until it's tight and then we're gonna worry about where we drill the hole and fit the peg. So I think the best place to get started is Basically, we'll take a piece of pipe, we'll cut it to about the length we want. This, this seems like a sensible length, which for this particular knife, is about 90 millimeters. So what, three and a half inches. 
If I may ask, um, what made you decide that was the appropriate length to cut? Um, just basically keeping it as minimal as possible, but as practical as it can be. This is actually technically a bit on the long side. We've got some space. We might be able to trim this back afterwards, but yeah, allowing for the possibility that it could travel a little bit inside, I want to make sure I've got plenty of it. And it's easier to cut too much and trim it back than not to cut enough. So I say, there's a good chance we'll be able to trim some of this back afterwards. It doesn't really need to be much longer than the blade itself. Um, but what I'm going to do is say, take this as a, as a gauge. So I'm going to cut it there. So I'm just going to come over to the bench hook, just use a standard wood saw. This plastic isn't particularly aggressive on the saws. Cutting pipes can be a bit awkward once you've got through the first bit, you're biting on sort of two opposite edges and it can shatter a little bit. But it's easy enough to cut with standard woodworking tools. You might want to take a knife and just kind of deburr it a little bit just by carving around the edges to take anything like that off. You could even scrape it with like the back of the spine. There are actually, you can buy specialist deburring tools for this type of pipe, but that, that's fine for our purposes. And then the next thing we've got to do is just pop the kettle on. I'll have uh, two sugars, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we'll wait for the kettle to boil and then we'll show you how to squash this bit of pipe. Right, so the kettle's boiled, we're going to put our piece of pipe in a cup, pour the water directly on it. So I'm filling the pipe up from the inside and then obviously it's going out around the outside as well. Just pretty much submerge that and we're going to probably leave that 30 seconds to a minute or so just to soften up. It's very, very rigid pipe. You can't, you know, if I squeeze really hard I can just about deform it, but it's pretty tough stuff. You know, I'm going to it doesn't break easily, so it's, a, it's the perfect thing for protecting edges, really. So just leave that a few more seconds. Now what I'm going to do, I've found that actually when it comes out of this water, my hands are fairly used to heat. I can just manipulate this in my fingers, it's not too, not too bad. But I've just got a towel out here to show you a slightly sort of safer way of doing it. So we're just going to give that a few more seconds to soften up. And I'm going to just use a pair of pliers. It's starting to go. In fact, let's just flip it over. Give that a few more seconds. And then that should be soft enough. And all I'm going to do is just fish it out, lay it on the towel, fold the towel over, and then just put some pressure down. And we've pretty much flattened it. Look. So now, within, within a few seconds, you've got a few seconds just to manipulate that shape a little bit. Like I say, it's not overly hot. The towel's taken some of the heat out of it. And at this point, we can kind of make sure it's wide enough for the knife to fit in and get that engagement with the ferrule there. So when people are doing this at home, yep. um, is that what they should be looking at? The ferrule should be able to be snug? I don't think it's a bad idea. You might as well lose that part in there. See, that's already gone really firm again now and it's just pinching that. So we've got a bit of a pinch fit there. You can sort of hear it relax a bit as that comes out. So that makes it a nice, a nice firm fit. The other good thing is it offers us a guide. If we know it just clicks into where the wood starts, when it comes to drilling the hole, we can bring this out, offer it up to the outside and work out exactly where we want to drill our hole because we know where the hook's going to sit inside because we've got the ferrule to offer up to the edge of the pipe. Okay, so next part of the job is going to be to actually drill that hole. So I'm going to do exactly that. I know that this goes in as far as I want it to, like that. So then I can take that out, lay it on the top, we just get a little pencil and work out exactly where that hook's going to sit. And we want the, the peg hole to be about in the middle of the pipe, ideally for this. This works well when you've got a, a pretty complete hook. Um, some of the open sweep knives, you might want to push the peg over to one side so it's actually binding here and stopping it, the knife from kind of flexing out around it. You want a bit of sideways pressure on there. So this is where the hook actually sits. So we want to drop down and drill the hole slightly below that. Okay, now we're going to drill, to start with, I'm going to drill a six millimetre hole. Because on this occasion, last time if you remember, we used 
a bit of chopstick. Now I've still got a bit of chopstick left over, but we're gonna, we're gonna make the peg from scratch this time. So I'm gonna drill the six mil hole. Again, it might help to just start this with a, a bit of a gimlet, just to give the drill somewhere to bite. This, this pipe is quite, um, quite slick, so it's gonna be easy for the drill to kind of skate around on the surface as we start drilling. And obviously if we're holding this still, it's not gonna be the easiest thing to clamp down. So I'm just gonna hold it with my hands, drill this hole. Right, I'm gonna go through the front and then actually, because we're gonna open this up, I'm gonna go through the back as well. So now hopefully what we should find is when we put this knife back in, it's gone in just beyond the hook being visible in the hole. So as the peg goes in, it actually wants to pull the knife in that bit further. So this is a roll peg and you can see this is quite a thin peg, so it's baggy in the hole at the back. So what we're gonna do is just make a slightly bigger peg. So we'll look at that next. Okay, so we've got it fitting how we want it to now. So the hook basically sits in there like this. We've got one continuous hole going all the way through at six mil. I'm just gonna open the front up slightly bigger. So this is a seven mil drill bit. Because what we're gonna do is carve a peg with a slight taper on it. So this hole will actually and what does that allow you to do by it? Well, it will just help it always be able to bite. If you look at the shape of this peg, it's pointy at one end and the other. So as long as it's extra long, if the hole starts to wear or the peg starts to wear, you can always just push it in that little bit further. So in this case, we used bamboo from a chopstick before. I've just got an off cut of pine batten here. Again, you can see it's, this old wood that's been used for something before. I could split a bit off the side of this block here. And all I'm gonna do is take my knife and just batten it through this piece of wood just to split it. Okay, don't do that with your favorite carving knife. Um, this bit's actually already got a hole in it, but I'm not gonna cheat. I'm gonna put the hole in it for securing it. And again, this is a bit rectangular now. So I'm gonna take a little bit, I'm gonna split that in half again, and then we'll have a little measure up, see what sort of section we've got. So we have now got something that is around nine millimeters, 10 millimeters, 11, you know, it's, 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 it's getting there. So the next thing to do is take your knife and just start to carve it down until it's gonna fit. So I'm gonna, first of all, get it square on the end because we want a peg that's effectively gonna be round and it's much easier to turn a square thing into a round thing. So we've got a square section on the end, but we're still a bit rectangular on the opposite end. This is extra long. I'm giving myself something to hold on to. So now I'm gonna just take the corners off so a couple of passes off of each corner. We don't want to be too aggressive at this point because it's not a massive piece of wood. So a few passes until we're starting to then get like a, a nice octagon on the end. Just keep going. And I'm gonna work closer to the tip now. So I'm staying away from this end and just starting to thin this down. So I'm gonna take a, just a series of cuts off of each flat that I've established now. So I'm just rotating it an eighth of a turn with each cut and we can start to make a pointy stick. I'm sure most people who own a knife have done that at some point in their life, so it shouldn't be too difficult to follow this method. We just keep going until we get down to the kind of dimension that we want, so that it fits through the hole. So obviously when we get to a point where we think it's close, we can start to try it in the hole. I don't think we're quite there yet. But again, just an eighth of a turn with each cut, and we'll take a uniform amount off. So we should be getting somewhere near where we want to be now. Let's give it a little try. We're not quite there, but we're within we're within a fraction of a shaving really. So I'm just going to go once more around, taking quite clean cuts now. And what we could also do is just around this top edge, just sort of chamfer it all the way around to make it find its way into the hole that little bit easier. 
Ooh, still a few. It's almost going now, so we're nearly there. side. Right, so that's going into the front hole now. So we can use that as a bit of a marker. Basically you've just roughed it up and you can see it's squashed the wood very slightly. So now that gives me a really good indication of where I want to be. I can come down, go a bit beyond that line because we can sacrifice the end of the peg. But we're getting this nice taper that we want that will help to lock it in when we're done. Going all the way through now, just about coming out the back. So a tiny bit more. There we go, so that goes all the way through now. And we've got a little bit of extra material here. I'm gonna leave this peg slightly long so that we can drill a hole in it to actually captivate it to the box. So the next thing we'll do is just set the drill up so that we can drill that hole before we trim it to length. Right, so we've got the peg set in the box. I'm just leaning that up against my bit of scrap here and I'm gonna drill a three mil hole to take this um, fairly fine cord there. I'm going to drill it in a piece that's got a little bit of extra material. Let's go all the way through there and then we need something to captivate it too so we'll put an extra hole in the box itself. Does that matter what side that goes on? Not really, no. No, as long as the cord's going to fit through it which it will. What we could actually do before we commit to that is see how much longer this box is than we need it to be. And it is a bit longer, so technically I could cut that, I could cut that hole off and come a bit tighter, but I don't mind having a little bit of extra length on the top there, I think it's okay. So what we do now is just trim this peg to length. Now there's various ways we could do that. We could just saw it off, which is probably the most efficient way. We could just whittle into it until it comes off. I'm just going to take this little saw and I'm going to hold the thicker end of it and just saw it off about there. And then probably the best way to hold this is actually to pop it back in the box because you've got something bigger to hold onto now and then I can just use that to trim this end up, keep it well supported. It wants to spin around a little bit in the hole but and pinch it. Just clean that end up a little bit. Okay, so we've got a nice neat peg. And then we just need a little bit of this. Now, if this gets all fluffy on the end, sometimes just give it a little singe with a lighter and you can make it almost like a needle point. Poke it through the peg. Sometimes these sort of nylon cord so you can catch a little bit on the drill hole. Take it through the box, tie a little knot. Simple overhand should do the trick. And it stops it pulling back through the hole. Give ourselves a half sensible length of material. It might be quite handy to be able to kind of hang this up with that. So take it about there. Put another knot in it. And again, just singe that end to stop it fraying. That gives a sensible size hanging loop. In our knife goes. In our peg goes. 
and there we have it. Pretty simple and straightforward. Not the prettiest thing, granted, but that's the job. Right, so like we said, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it is, it is really practical. It's gonna be really tough. It's gonna to protect the knife really well. Um, but what could we do to pretty up a little bit? Well, you could use marker pens and things to perhaps color it in a little bit. You could use some electrical tape. This is just insulating tape. And what could be quite useful about this is say you've got a left and a right handed knife, you could maybe do you know, do a lap of tape around this in a blue colour and then potentially, if this is your right-handed one, perhaps do your left-handed one in a red colour or something a bit different. But, oh. So we could wrap a bit of tape around it. We could also, what's worth doing I think, is marking where the peg goes in. Just because we've tapered those holes so just use a marker pen. So this, this, this surface marks quite well with permanent markers. Just don't try and smudge it immediately because it will probably run a little bit. But you could alternatively, if you wanted to get really cocky, you could like wrap it in leather and stitch the leather on to give it a really nice finish. You could tie it on with a little bit of leather thong rather than a bit of Venetian blind cord. You know, there's, I think it's really nice and handy to be able to use up basically scrap materials but if you wanted to make it a bit more attractive, you could, you could carve a wooden cap to sit in the end of it, for example. There's all sorts of things you could do to pretty it up. There's also different colored pipes alone, isn't there? You can get different colored pipes. This is a standard white PVC pipe. You can get gray, you can get black. Um, I couldn't vouch if they're all exactly the same chemical composition and how well they'll respond to the, like the, the heat manipulation. But if they're made of PVC, there's a good chance you get it warm enough and it's gonna become really pliable. So that, that is the beauty of it, like I say, you can use it for bigger tools as well, kind of the world you're you can flatten it completely so it'll take flat, take, you know, take flat blades if you just want a, a quick solution, but I think for hook knives in particular, it does work really well. So there you have it, my friends. That is a wrap for this video. Lee, thank you so much. You're welcome, mate. No worries. I appreciate that. Our goal was to show at least one shift that's as accessible as possible to most of you that are out there. And Lee, I think you've done the job. Hopefully. So I said, just, just don't go around hacking at your neighbor's pipe <laughs> <laughs> when they're asleep. Um, I said, but no, that was really, really cool. Like I said, when I first saw it, I thought, wow, it's so simple. It's something we showed in the very first video of this series where Lee gave an overview of about 17 or so different sheaves. And in that specific example, you use a piece of cardboard yes. tube, didn't yeah. you? This is a much more durable material yeah. and actually more universally easy to find, I think. So here's what I'm gonna do, guys, is uh, three things. So number one, links in the description to all the previous videos in this series, as well as the continuation of the videos that come after this, depending on what order you're watching. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna put a link to Lee's website down below as well. It will mean the world to me, you go check that out. You can join his email newsletter, and that's a great way of finding out what he's getting up to on a regular basis. Also, what I'm gonna do is put a link below as well to his Instagram, so he's quite prolific on Instagram, and you can see a history of all the work that he gets up to. I'm saying this for the benefit of those of you that may not be aware of, of Lee's background. It's something I didn't mention at the very beginning for those that may not be familiar with Lee or seeing this video for the first time. And those Lee's a very accomplished great woodworker. He's a close friend of mine, but he's also a mentor. So what you're gonna be able to see on his feed is a plethora of work that he gets up to. So he's a very skilled guy. Um, and obviously on that feed, you can see obviously a history that goes back many years. So in the world to me, you also go check that out. So like I said, all the links below to everything that I described. I look forward to seeing your next video in this series. So Lee, thank you once again. Thank you, sir. I really do appreciate it. So guys, as always, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. From Lee Stoffer and myself at Outdoors, peace out.